Honourable members, please be seated. Secretary General. Consideration of bills. I now call upon the Attorney General and Minister for Economy, Civil Service, Communications, Housing and Community Development, the Honorable Ayaz Syed Kayum, to move his motion. You have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, pursuant to Standing Order 51, I move. The Interpretation Amendment Bill 2021 be considered by Parliament without delay. That the bill must pass through one stage of a single sitting of Parliament. That the bill must not be referred to a standing committee or other committee of Parliament. Indeed, that the bill must be debated and voted upon by Parliament on Wednesday, 22nd September. And that one hour be given to debate the bill with the right of reply given to me as the member moving the motion. Thank you, sir. Is there a seconder? Honourable Speaker, sir, I beg to send motion. I now call upon the Honourable Attorney General to speak to his motion. You have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is uh, the second of the trifecta, if you like, of bills that are being presented to Parliament that actually relate to the same subject matter, and that is to ensure that we have proper. Uh, registration of names, and we ensure that we uh, establish authentication of identification. Mr. Speaker, sir, in this particular bill, very quickly, uh, Interpretation Act essentially defines the uh, birth certificate to date. Surprisingly, the laws are so archaic, as in fact, there is no definition of a birth certificate. So in, in the Interpretation Act itself, we are defining what a uh, birth certificate is, uh, secondly, Mr. Speaker, sir, it also says that if anybody is required to give their name for official purposes, whether I'm getting married, whether I'm applying for fishing license, I'm getting an LTA uh, license, I'm uh, going to FNPF, I'm going for uh, FRCS, I must give my birth certificate name, essentially. That's what it says. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, sir, the, uh, the other issue, of course, is to deal with the, the, the matter of... Uh, 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 you know, those people who have become Fijian citizens by naturalization. A lot of hoteliers, for example, in Fiji, who have become citizens of Fiji, and how do we establish what is their proper name? Uh, traditionally, what they've taken, whatever name is on the passport. But what we are requiring now is that the um, department, the immigration department that issues the certificate, uh, they must ensure that uh, they get the, they cite the birth certificate name itself too. And of course, sometimes we have people whose birth certificates are in a foreign language uh, to make sure that there's a proper uh, deciphering of the names uh, through third party validation. And Mr. Speaker, sir, there's also a transitional provision. Essentially, what the transitional provision is that, for example, if we, uh, you know, if my name is uh, 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 Josefa Valenitambua, and my name is register, uh, uh, registered as Joe Valle, and I've got my, because everybody calls me Joe Valle, and that's the name that I have in my driving license, it does not mean that by the coming of this particular provision, that therefore my license is null and void. There's a transitional provision. So if my license expires in two years' time, then when I go to re-register or reapply for my license, only then I have to produce my BRN number because we have allowed for that, because obviously people, you know, suddenly we don't want licenses and all those permits, etc., to end overnight just because this law is coming to place. What we are saying is that if that name has been registered and you're legally using that name for my LTA uh, driving license or my fisheries license, which is done on an annual basis or three years basis, that continues. It's not deemed to be invalid. And when it expires, then of course it, it, uh, you apply under the new name. Of course, there are certain things that you register. Once you register, there's no expiry. 
So if I'm registered in the VKB, my name does not get removed. That will stay there forever, whatever name I'm registered under. So there's all those provisions that have been taken into account because we don't want to create any sort of conundrum as a result of this. This is essentially to ensure that we get people who have registered under names uh, in the transitional provision that is not really their name, not their birth name. They can continue with their names until that particular license or whatever uh, expires. Uh, but when it's renewed, it's under the BRE name. So uh, these are the provisions of this particular uh, provision, sir. Thank you. I thank the Honourable Attorney General. Honourable Members, the floor is now open for debate on the motion. At the end of the debate, we will have the right of reply from the movement. Uh, anyone wishing to take the floor? Honourable Honourable Speaker, I thank you. Well, before I, let me just uh, first congratulate uh, uh, Ms. Mrs. Emerson for her appointment. And uh, we are all proud of you uh, on getting that uh, confirmation to the uh, to your position now. Honourable Speaker, these so called trifecta of laws or amendments all go back to, to the case against me, which was totally unnecessary, which was, to, which was simply a personal attack by the Honorable Minister against me, yes, and using the supervisor of election. And now, here we have a national solution to something that is clearly personal to him. Why should you engage the parliament? Why should you engage the whole process of this to resolve or make good what you did, which the Chief Justice said was totally wrong and unlawful, and brought great embarrassment to your office, Honorable Speaker? I'm sure you were totally embarrassed. I was also embarrassed. But the fact that first you told me, get out. Then you have to welcome me back. All because of their unlawful and wrongful action as per what the Chief Justice said. And the proper thing for him to do is to sack the supervisor of election. And this is not the first time the supervisor of election has been doing his bidding personally. And wrong, wrong, wrong. There are about three cases that the, that the courts have said that, that the supervisor of election has been wrong. But he's still sitting there. He should be out. And first, I call upon him, please, get out. Get somebody else useful. Somebody who knows the law. Because that it was the Chief Justice said. You, in your position, you should know what the law is. And you interpret this wrongly by, by, by questioning my, the termination of my position here. And he acted unlawfully. The right thing for the Honorable Minister to do was to sack him. Instead of bringing all these three amendments that we have to engage here, standing up here and waste our time debating. Then another day on Wednesday, and in the process, denying, denying the right of the public to participate in the lawmaking process. And it's not simple. There's a difficulty here, Honorable Speaker, if I can just refer you to, uh, to the explanatory notes. It says, the birth, deaths, and marriages registration seeks to amend Section 11 of the Act to permit the mother of a child uh, born alive or still born in Fiji to register the child and to give her equal status as that of the father of the child. You know, it's just, it's not as simple as that. What will be the impact of this to the VKB? What will be the impact of this to the culture of the Turkey? Their culture. Uh, that culture which is reflected in the maintenance of that register in the VKB. In which case, in, in most cases, they have to go through the patrilineal line. And if not, there has to be an agreement. And all those will come out if rightfully, as the law requires, this amendment is to be referred to a parliamentary, uh, parliamentary committee so that the input of the experts, the input of those affected, the input of the stakeholders are brought in and clearly thought out instead of it or, the, or this house giving it one hour now and one hour on Wednesday. That's not enough, totally not enough. And for that reason, 
uh, we are opposing this motion. The floor is still open. If there is anyone wishing to take the floor, there is no one wishing to take the floor. I give the floor to the Honorable Attorney General. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I, uh, it's really quite entertaining to have Honorable Nawai Kula actually back in Parliament. And frankly, frankly, I think he's really elevating himself because he thinks that we all sat around and wanted him out of Parliament. Actually, we don't because your good entertainment value, apart from that, is that you make the opposition look completely incompetent. It's good to have people like you around. Mr. Speaker, sir, firstly, he's got the law wrong. He said I should have sacked him. They talk about the rule of law, but they don't understand who appoints the supervisor of elections. You can't simply go around sacking somebody who you, do, who you don't appoint in the first place. That's the point, Mr. Speaker, sir. The SOE, you see, the order. Mr. Order. Speaker, sir, see again, this is the this is the incompetence that he's demonstrating, which is good for us, because the supervisor of elections actually is appointed by the Constitutional Officers Commission. He's now talking about the government statistician who's appointed by somebody else, not the Constitutional Officers Commission. See, such fundamental knowledge is not within them. Mr. Speaker, sir, firstly, he thinks that we sit there, compact and get to, just to get him out. It doesn't matter whether he's here or not there. He doesn't make a difference. Mr. Speaker, sir, the other point is that uh, the, 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 um, he has not declared that he's actually suing the supervisor of elections and the Attorney General from this action. So he's making his case here now. He's filed a writ suing the supervisor of elections and myself. But he does not have the professionalism to stand up here and say, look, I'm saying this, but I'm also suing you people. He's not informing the public of Fiji. Mr. Speaker, sir, the other point about the VKB. Again, you see, this is the sort of, you know, what I call the ethnicization of every single issue. The registration of a person's birth is different to the registration in VKB. It's such a fundamental legal difference. And he's saying, now, Honorable Tambuya, you should be objecting to what he said. He's now saying, just because the mother can now also register the birth, therefore no longer the patrilineal lineage, lineage assessment of whether a person belongs in VKB should continue or not. VKB has got different uh, form of registration. You should know that. You should tell him that. But you sit there mute when he's just completely misled Parliament. Registration of a birth is separate to registration on the VKB. Honorable Lalam Balabu knows this. Everybody in this house knows this. Please, Honorable Nawaikula, brush up on your knowledge of the law. Mr. Speaker, sir, again, he's trying to create this ruckus trying to make the people feel, oh, somehow or the other, the VKB is under attack just because they've changed the law. Now women can register their sons and daughters, therefore VKB is under threat. Honorable Gary Baravi, you know that too. But they sit there mute, not correcting him, because they believe in the uh, politics of fear. They believe in the politics of creating ethnic division. This is what it fundamentally boils down to. Order. Order. Mr. Speaker, sir. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, there's nothing sinister about this. This is clarifying the law, and that's what we're doing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Attorney General. Honorable members, the Parliament will now vote. The question is, pursuant to Standing Orders 51, a, that the Interpretation Amendment Bill 2021 be considered by Parliament without delay. B, that the bill must pass through one stage at a single sitting of Parliament. C, that the bill must not be referred to a standing committee or other committee of Parliament. And D, that the bill must be debated and voted upon by Parliament on Wednesday, 22nd September 2021, but that one hour be given to debate the bill, with the right of reply given to the Honorable Attorney General as the member moving this motion. Does any member oppose the bill? Honourable Member, 
there being opposition, the Parliament will now vote by acclamation. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against say nay. 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 Have it. Nay. Honourable members, we will move on. Secretary General. Consideration of bills. I now call upon the Attorney General and Minister for Economy, Civil Service, Communications.